Why are you running Windows 7, lol? So, why do you still run Windows 7? Also, is that Windows 7? I admire your bravery. And his main Bro, OS is why Windows, Windows 7. Windows 7. Using Windows 7. Wow. Using Windows 7. Windows 7. This operating system is really old. So old, in fact, that support ended for it almost 9 months ago. And I'm pretty sure there are some younger viewers out there that are actually younger than Windows 7 itself. But me, on the other hand, I actually still use it. That's kind of weird. Why haven't I moved on to a more modern operating system? Well, let's talk about my possible alternatives. First up, Windows 8.1. Now, I actually use Windows 8.1 on my Surface Pro 3, and I think it runs exceptionally well on a device like this. It has a touch screen, and I can fold it into a tablet, and I think this is one of the best operating systems you could put on a device like this. However, I'm talking about my desktop computer with a keyboard and mouse without a touchscreen monitor. And for a device like that, yeah, Windows 8.1 just doesn't make sense at all. First up, I'm just dishing out money for 3 more years of support, so after 3 years, I'm gonna have to go through this whole process all over again. Secondly, the start screen is just bad on a desktop computer. Elements are so big in the start menu that it's just not an intuitive experience for keyboard and mouse users. And I could do some readjusting to Windows 8.1 to actually make it work well, but it just takes away from the cleanliness of the operating system. And because it's so underused, when programs stop supporting Windows 7, it's probably going to stop running on Windows 8.1 as well. I just don't want to spend money for 3 more years of support and less program compatibility in the future. I'll talk more about Windows 10, but what about macOS? Well, macOS basically needs entire new hardware to actually function properly, and if I didn't want to buy new hardware, I really don't want to go through the process of hackintoshing because of driver support and limited program compatibility, and also I just don't like the UI of macOS that much. Now Linux? Windows 10 is the only logical alternative, however, it just doesn't live up to the standards that Windows 7 had. Welcome to a segment I like to call trashing on Windows 10 because I'm a terrible person. First up, Blower and ads. Oh, you install a fresh new copy of Windows 10? Oh, well, go into the start menu to check out our free apps like Candy Crush Soda Saga. And while you're there, check out our other great third party apps. For an operating system that markets itself with the phrase get things done and that it helps you focus, I find this really obnoxious that there's storage being filled up with really unnecessary ads and bloatware. And every time I uninstall these apps, I feel like they reinstall themselves again every single time. Windows 10 also has a very bland UI with very flat and inanimate elements. Windows 7 has the advantage of Windows Arrow, and Windows 8.1 does have a similar UI, but it's much more colorful and alive, especially considering live tiles are flipping all the time and not like every 2 minutes on Windows 10. A lot of this could be fixed by the way, if it wasn't for Windows 10 breaking themes all the time. And here's a big one, terrible quality feature updates. I feel like every single time a feature update was released, Something has to break, whether it's a program refusing to run properly, to the entire operating system just being a garbled mess. This was one of the biggest reasons why I actually downgraded to Windows 7 back when I used Windows 10 from 2015 to 2017. However, on top of that, there's also many inconsistencies and duplicate programs, which is one of the most controversial things about Windows 10. And you know what? I'll keep this short. Different right-click menus, different setting control menus, different paint programs, and the list goes on. There's so many duplicate programs and inconsistencies in Windows 10 that it just boggles my mind that they didn't fix this yet. There's also the in-your-face aspect of Windows 10, including it begging you to upgrade to the latest version, sometimes without the user's consent, and I've seen this happen a lot. And if you don't know what you're doing during setup or post-installation, you'll sometimes be forced to use a Microsoft account no matter what. I'm pretty sure in an update last year, they actually removed the ability to create an offline account during setup, and that really annoyed me and a bunch of other users. There was a workaround to it, but it just boggles my mind that they're trying to force this into the user no matter what you do, and sometimes people don't want to use a Microsoft account, but Microsoft is shoving it in their throats no matter what. And there's also suggestions everywhere throughout the operating system whenever you're doing something, but I'm pretty sure there's a way to disable that via settings. Windows 10 is also a lot less stable and smooth compared to its predecessors, especially if you're using older hardware and for those using a mechanical hard drive instead of an SSD. Which yes, I use a hard drive because I need more storage. I feel like this also has something to do with feature updates being released twice a year with little optimization from both Microsoft's side, as I've stated before, and the program developer's side because they now need to update their programs for newer versions of Windows 10 depending on how the update affects their programs. However, because the updates are being released twice a year, the cycle happens all over again in the span of about 6 months. 
With the combination of desktop and tablet UIs, there are times when some elements are just so big in Windows 10 that it just doesn't make sense for mouse and keyboard users, like the settings in the settings app being big and spaced out, the calculator buttons being larger, file explorer menu bars being bigger, and so on. Windows 8.1 does keyword most of this differently because it tries to separate desktop and touch. The touch is in the start screen with all your apps, and the desktop part is in the desktop app. So everything you'd want to do with the keyboard and mouse are found in the desktop app. Windows 10 instead tries to combine all these elements into one, and it just doesn't work well. Oh yeah, and Cortana is basically useless. Wow, that was kind of mean actually. She's mostly useful in a mobile environment when I'm in a hurry and I need to do something quickly, and I feel like this is where virtual assistants thrive. But in this case, I'm sitting down and taking the time to finish my work, so... She's kind of pointless to me. There are some useful features to Windows 10, like extra desktops, but the cons outweigh the pros for me. Windows 10 just feels incomplete and not yet matured, so I just don't feel like this is justifiable. And I'd have to deal with all of this for what? Security updates? Which brings me to why Windows 7 is just better. And I'll try to skim through this section a little bit quicker, but Windows 7 is just much more stable, quicker, and smoother, no matter which hardware you're on, whether it's newer or older, or if you're using an SSD or a hard drive. It's also less in your face all the time. It actually just lets you get things done without any disturbances, and you're not being begged to use a Microsoft account or update the operating system all the time. It's way more consistent than Windows 10, and it's much more reliable as well, meaning that nothing breaks after an update all the time. There's also no bloatware, like the preloaded programs are actually useful. Like seriously, Windows accessories are basically all I need preloaded, why do I need Candy Crush Soda Saga preloaded with Windows 10? It also has hands down the best start menu of all time, like it's so simple and yet so useful at the same time. I barely have to do any modifications to have a good user experience. And also, just as a side note and a bonus fact that Windows Aero Glass transparency is like the best thing ever. It looks so good. The OS is also designed for keyboard and mouse users, so element sizes make sense and it's faster for me to do certain tasks. In my eyes, Windows 7 was basically the final version of Windows to add some actual useful features just like Vista and XP. And afterward, other just changed major parts of the Windows formula for better or for worse. And this brings us to the final point of this video, which everyone's been waiting for. Am I worried about my security? No. I made a Windows 7 survival guide video back when Windows 7 ended support, explaining ways you can keep yourself secure after 2020. But I'll simplify my points. Web browsers are still up to date. Antiviruses are still up to date. The majority of other programs are still up to date. And we have brains. Windows Update is not only just one layer of security, but it's honestly the last layer of security because all the other factors I just mentioned basically supplement this lack of security updates, and they're the first layers that viruses go through before they get to Windows Update and Windows itself. And besides, this operating system was last updated in January of 2020. Unless we were in the early 2010s or the late 2000s, most vulnerabilities at this point have been found, and currently, the chances of getting hacked, supported or unsupported, is slim. Now, if I was using this operating system five years later, then yeah, this would be a big issue. If my programs are up to date, I'm okay with living without updates. The reason why people don't use XP and Vista anymore is not just because of security updates, but because programs are out of support, which is a much bigger security risk than Windows Update. I'm not encouraging that everyone just starts using out-of-date operating systems. This is just a personal preference, and I'm just not quite ready to make the transition to Windows 10 yet. But what does the future entail for me? I've been keeping up to date on Windows 10 over the past year or two using Windows 7, and I have to say that Windows 10 is finally maturing properly. Things are starting to look like they're in the right place now, even if nothing is perfect. I've also started using a Microsoft account more and more on my phone and my Surface Pro 3 running Windows 8.1, so Windows 10 is starting to become a more appealing option to me. I might be upgrading to Windows 10 sooner or later, maybe in a month or two once the next version, version 2009, finally comes out. However, for the time being, I think I'll stick with Windows 7 and wait for a few more things to be ironed out. And that is exactly why I still use Windows 7 in 2020.